With all of these options for chatterbaits ranging from $6 to almost $20, how do you pick the right one? I'm sure you've noticed an awful lot of hype surrounding chatterbaits, especially the more expensive ones. One claims to send vibration shockwaves. Another says it has unmatched erratic action. Is this just marketing baloney or is there actually any substantial difference in the way these baits really act? We're going underwater today with slow motion cameras to cut through the baloney and see what's up. We're looking at seven chatterbaits, including the original Z-Man chatterbait and the high-priced jackhammers and thunder cricket. We'll talk about the differences in their components and then take a look at them underwater with multiple trailers so you can decide which one would work best for your fishing before you buy 15 different ones to decide which one you like. So let's get to it. Here's the first contender in our lineup. The original Z-Man chatterbait costs about six bucks and catches plenty of bass and pike. It has a 5 aught hook, a stainless steel blade, a changeable skirt, and a molded bait keeper. The original chatterbait rides on a bit of an angle when empty, relying on a trailer to provide downforce on the hook to make it level. The blade moves smoothly back and forth, and the line clip looks secure and keeps the line away from the moving blade. The skirt has a nice pulsating action, and it looks good with various trailers. The turbulence from the blade did not interfere with the action of any of the trailers I tested. When the retrieve is paused or the bait is deflected off a piece of cover, it resumes chattering pretty quickly once the line tightens up. Overall, this bait performed well for being the cheapest one in the chatterbait lineup. Then we move up in price from there. The Z-Man Chatterbait Custom is about 7 bucks and downsizes to a 4 odd hook on most models, upgrading to a black nickel mustad hook. The bait keeper changes to wire instead of being molded in, and it has a mustad fast act line clip. The custom has more of an erratic action, rolling side to side as it moves through the water, especially after a pause in the retrieve or a deflection. The line clip is secure and keeps the line safely away from the blade. I noticed that the skirt has a more fluid action than the one on the original chatterbait. The turbulence caused by the blade does not interfere with trailers for the most part, although the top of this rage craw looks like it might be affected a little bit when rigged vertically. It resumes chattering about as quickly as the original after a pause in the retrieve. This bait sits very level in the water, whether it's used with or without a trailer. The Project Z chatterbait is about the same price, but it has hand-tied skirts, 3D eyes, a 5 aught must add ultra point hook, or 6 aught on the 3 quarter and 1 ounce models, and a matching paint job that flows well from the head through the skirt. There's also a larger jig collar to reduce skirt slippage. The Project Z also comes in a weedless model for about a dollar more. The Project Z has sort of a hunchback appearance because of the large jig collar that holds the skirt outward a long way. When used empty, it runs with a slight upward angle. It has a very consistent side-to-side -side roll during the retrieve, and the blade moves smoothly. Like the original and the custom, the line tie is similar and keeps the line away from the moving blade. The large 3D eye looks really nice underwater. The skirt has a great fluid motion and maintains a large profile because of that large jig collar holding the skirt out really wide. Trailer action is unaffected by the blade, including even the vertical rigged Rage Craw. It looks good with all of the trailers I tried, and it also resumes chattering about as quickly as the other two. Overall, I was impressed with just about everything about the Project Z, but I'm not sure that I like the really wide profile of the skirt because it doesn't seem to pulsate as well as some of the others. The Chatterbait Elite is about 8 bucks and upgrades to a longer shank Gamakatsu 5 aught hook and airbrush jig heads. The trailer keeper goes back to a molded in design with this one. The blade is thicker metal and they stuck with the fast act line clip. The Elite runs level in the water and again goes back to the slimmer profile of the original and the custom. Personally, I think I like this style better. The bait runs very level in the water when empty or with a trailer and the skirt looks beautiful and vibrant. The lure has a similar side-to-side -side roll as the original, not as much roll as the Project Z or the Custom. It also has a really nice pulsating action. The blade does not seem to interfere with the trailers at all, although I can't decide whether the top tail of the vertical rigged Rage Craw has a bit less action. Do you guys think it has a little bit less, or maybe it's just my mind playing tricks on me here? The Power Minnow trailer seems to make it run on just a bit of a downward angle, but the other trailers don't seem to have this effect at all. When paused, the Elite resumes chattering about as quickly as the others, or possibly a little bit more slowly. Overall, I like this one a lot, and I really liked how this one looked with the black and blue Rage Craw. 
The Chatterbait Stealth Blade jumps significantly in price, up to about 14 bucks. This one has a small polycarbonate blade for a more finesse approach. It has a hand-tied silicone skirt with dual wire trailer keepers. The hook is a lighter wire, so it can be used with lighter setups. The Stealth Blade runs level or on a slightly downward angle when used without a trailer. The blade moves in sort of a wobbly figure eight pattern. The tungsten head allows this bait to sink very quickly, even in the smaller sizes. The skirt has a nice pulsating action to it, and the bait has a slight side-to-side -side rolling action similar to the original and the custom. I'd say it actually comes in last as far as the blade resuming its chattering action, but it's still very fast to chatter again once the line gets tight. I did notice that it shows some erratic hunting action once the tension is back in the line, instead of just resuming a straight, consistent action. The small blade does not seem to affect the action of any of the trailers, including the vertical rigged Rage Craw. The jackhammer jumps to about 15 bucks and is well regarded in the bass angling community. The hook is a heavy duty gamakatsu and this time they've made the blade thinner, supposedly to help the blade start to vibrate immediately and cause the bait to hunt side to side more. The tungsten head is airbrushed with 3D eyes and the skirt is hand tied silicone. The jackhammer is wild in the water when used without a trailer. It has a very strong side-to-side -side rolling action that sometimes gets so extreme that it rolls all the way over, although adding any kind of trailer seemed to dampen this effect and cause it to run more consistently. It ran flat in the water with all of the trailers that I tested. The high-quality paint job looks really nice in the water. The silicone skirting looks delicate in the water and compresses down around the hook more so than the other chatterbaits did. The blade turbulence did not impact any of the trailers that I tested, including the vertical rigged Rage Craw. Supposedly, the blade of the jackhammer resumes chattering faster than any other chatterbait, but I'd say it was about the same as most of the others. What is very different is the way that it rolls wildly side to side after a pause in the retrieve or a deflection. This action was similar to the way the jackhammer stealth blade responded to the line getting tight again. The Strike King Thunder Cricket is intended to compete with the Z-Man jackhammer. It's a little cheaper at about 13 bucks. This one has a wire bait keeper and a heavy duty snap and a thin stainless steel blade. The Thunder Cricket runs on a slightly upward angle when used without a trailer. It has a moderate side to side roll, similar I'd say to the Project Z. The skirting seems to be a little bit stiffer than the other so it doesn't show as much pulsating action. It also compresses down around the hook similar to the jackhammer skirt instead of showing a fuller profile like the Elite or the Project Z. Whether you like the fuller or slimmer profile is totally up to you. The line tie is secure like all of the others and holds the line plenty far away from the vibrating blade. Turbulence from the Thunder Cricket's blade did not interfere with the action of any of the trailers that I tested. When paused or deflected, the blade began chattering very quickly once the line tightened up. After watching these video clips many times, I came to the conclusion that the Elite or the Project Z is probably my favorite. Either of those is a nice balance between performance, appearance, and cost. That said, I think all of these baits perform similarly, so I definitely don't think that any of them is a bad choice. I'd be really interested to hear which one you think looked best underwater. By the way, I'll leave links in the description to all of the trailers and chatterbaits used in this video. Thanks a lot for watching, and let us know what you think. 